Hello you beautiful audience. This is Reddit Stories. And today's topic is. What ruined religion for you? So many things but the final straw for me was my church asking a homeless man to leave and not come back. He would sit and listen to the sermons never bothered anyone and always sat in the very back. I confronted my youth group leader and she defended the preacher. When I was sexually assaulted by another boy and I spoke to my pastor because I was afraid to tell my family. He asked me what I did to make the other kid have impure thoughts and tried to make it out to be my fault. That was the exact moment I lost what little faith I had to begin with. This 13 year old kid got exposed for being gay and was bullied into suicide by his family for it. I remember during summers they would send him to a special camp to cure his gayness. I was really good friends with his little sister and she would always say how embarrassing it was to have a gay brother and would hope he would become straight. He ended up hanging himself at 13 or 14. It happened in middle school and I can't pretend like I was friends with him but his story always stuck with me. Well being from Northern Ireland I have more than the average number of reasons. I guess it's a toss up between. Learning that the clergy on both sides had been diddling kids including selling access to them to rich pedophiles. Learning that the Catholic Church ran women's homes where they kidnapped babies, sold the ones that didn't die and used their mothers as forced labor. Or the classic, that we had a civil war that was largely delineated on religious lines so people spent 40 years telling their children that the other half were basically scary aliens that meant us harm. Oh yeah and I liked dinosaurs and the church people kept telling me they weren't real so fuck that. A couple of friends of mine invited me to a summer camp when I was in middle school. The first warning sign I noticed was the packing list included a bible, but I brushed it off because the camp brochure had horseback riding, water slides, and a bunch of stuff that seemed cool. And then I get there. And one of the first things we had to do was line up and deposit our money in a camp account. Why? So during our twice daily church services we could write donation slips that would take money out of our account and give to the camp. You get the idea. It was full on, 100%, a super conservatacy religious Christian summer camp that just happened to have fun stuff in between the ridiculous religious nonsense. Fun stuff like bands coming in to sing religious smash hits like My Daddy Ain't a Monkey. No. I'm not lying. That was the name of the song. Thank God I was there with another guy who my friends convinced to attend camp with us. I eventually confronted them about their lie and they admitted that had done it because they knew I wasn't a believer and did it to save me. I told them that I didn't care what their reasons were, if they were my friends they wouldn't have lied. And if they believed so strongly about it, would they really lie, etc. Left camp bewildered and more than a little betrayed. As the years went on and I continued to see the complete lack of integrity and regard for honesty amongst religious people, I was still disappointed, but not surprised. <laughs> Seeing a whole congregation of people perform an exorcism on a five-year-old boy, I was a teen youth leader at a Southern Baptist church I had been involved with for several years. During Sunday morning service one day, one of the deacons came from the children's church building next door and interrupted the preacher to whisper something in his ear. They both left immediately, and when they returned, were dragging a four or five year old boy down the aisle who was screaming like a banshee. They ended up taking him in front of the church, holding him down, and reciting all sorts of bullshit about demonic possession, asking the churchgoers to come up to him and help banish the demon from the child. Kinda ruined God for me. <laughs> How agonizingly long and tedious mass was as a Roman Catholic kid. Stand up, sing. Sit down. Then kneel. Then stand again. Sing again. Sit down. Stand up. Kneel and pray. Then 30 minutes of droning from the robed guy at the front. Then stand up and sing. Sit down. Stand up. WTF please make this end. When I was 12 my father pulled me aside and said son, you are old enough to decide about religion. 
I wanted to give you a chance to experience religion. If you want to keep going to church, you can, but it's also okay if you don't want to go anymore. I said okay I don't want to go anymore. My father said okay, me too. And that was that. I was like 15 and playing an instrument in the worship band for the most popular youth group in the area, which is a very Christian area. At one point the pastor dude was praying and the musicians were behind him waiting to play when he was done. The whole room, 200 plus, had their heads bowed as dude was praying. Then his prayer went into the whole here's what you pray if you want to become a Christian right now yada yada yada. Then at the end he says. Okay everyone keep your heads bowed, eyes closed. Now if you just prayed that prayer with me I want you to look up, everyone else keep your heads bowed but if you just now gave your life to Jesus look up at me or raise your hands so I can see you. I'm behind him, and facing the crowd who have their eyes closed so I decide it's safe to take a peek. I discreetly look up and notice that exactly zero people in the crowd are looking up at him. Every single person still has their head bowed, eyes closed. Which is fine, I mean maybe they were all already Christians. However, as I'm looking at nobody responding, Mr. Pastor starts saying okay I see you there, oh I see another over there, amen and you back there, praise God. Yes I see you over there, amen come find me afterwards. It was perplexing to see him lie to so many people like that. And this wasn't some nobody youth pastor, he was like quite legit having written books and being mentioned in national articles and stuff. TLDR, an acclaimed youth pastor tried to make it seem like his prayer had converted several people, when I could clearly see it had not. My mother. She instilled some serious shame into me under the guise of God. Some things she said. Not allowed to believe in Santa because that takes credit away from God. Santa was actually a hand of Satan trying to corrupt me. Not allowed to believe in the Easter Bunny because it was also a hand of Satan trying to corrupt me away from Jesus. I wasn't allowed to feel pride in my accomplishments because it's a sin. I was a dickhead because my dad got me fully vaccinated as a child and that is against God's plan. Hollywood is operated by Satan so I wasn't allowed to watch movies or shows, especially Disney. Harry Potter was an absolute no because witchcraft is an affront to God. Scientists should not be trusted under any circumstances. My rare genetic condition was part of God's plan and I'd understand someday. Not allowed to say damn because it's an affront to God. Etc. That combined with her regular, not religious abuse has left me struggling a lot with my religiosity. I was 15. My father had been diagnosed with ALS. I had gone to a youth group thing with a Christian friend of mine and they had a circle of teenagers going around talking about things going on in their lives and relating it to God. When it was my turn. I shared that my father was dying and I didn't understand why him, I was angry and I said something along the lines of I doubted there was a God if this was happening. Basically a normal thing to say when you're young and you have a sick relative. I got chewed out for even questioning God and the rest of the kids refused to talk to me the rest of the night including my friend. You would think I had killed someone it was that strong of a reaction. Also, my brother became a huge born again Christian later on in life and tried to push his beliefs on us hard. We got told we were going to hell and my then boyfriend, now husband, and I got chewed out for living in sin. Asterisk editing this because I didn't expect this comment to get much attention, but thank you everyone for all of the supportive comments. A few things to add because I keep seeing them below and will do my best to try to answer, but. Youth group happened close to 20 years ago. I was actually brought up Catholic and went to church weekly, I stopped going when my dad got sick and he couldn't go anymore so that my mom could continue to go. She needed the hour or so break and I wanted some one-on-one -on -one time with my dad. We took care of him at home for the majority of his illness. Church also meant more to her than it did to me, but towards the end she stopped going too. I was drawn to youth group because I was curious what Christianity was like and my friend had painted it as a supportive place. 
we didn't have youth groups at my church. I also thought questioning God was more or less normal. I wasn't a jerk about it either, I was very introverted and hated confrontation. I just wanted some kind of conversation and these kids seemed like they were strong in their faith. Looking back I guess I wished I could find comfort in religion. My brother became born again after my grandmother passed in 2012. The majority of his jerkishness happened over the next three to four years until he switched to a different church, he mellowed out a bit and we, me, my mother and my other brother, finally came to an understanding that if we wanted a relationship we wouldn't discuss his religion. I get the occasional you should come to my church but that's nothing compared to what he used to say. I also tolerate it for my mom. Because all she has left is us, I'm not going to start arguments or refuse to go to holidays. She's been through enough. I also know that my brother is not a bad person, he just goes 100% into whatever he's currently into, and religion wasn't any different. I'm 34. Female. I don't go to church. I'm not religious. Married a guy who leans towards being an atheist. This all happened a while ago and again, I really appreciate all the supportive comments and messages. You guys are good humans. When I was 6 years old, the pastor gave a letter to my aunt to give to my mom saying that we were not donating enough money to the church. So we stopped going, and I have never been to church since. When the pastor started ranting about the evils of women, saying that Satan walks among us in the body of every female and men must take measures against them. It was later enforced in my mind when I met his very timid granddaughter in high school. She fully believed she was cursed from birth and showed serious signs of abuse. It didn't make me think all Christians are evil, but it showed me how easily a religion led by humans can be warped. That theme has been shown to me too many times now to get behind the idea of any formal religion. EDA, wow, I have never had this many comments on a post. Trying to read everything but the main things I'm seeing. The granddaughter ended up happily married. She started getting rebellious in high school but nothing crazy. I forget if she had been homeschooled or was at a local Christian school but I do know that at that time all students went to the same high school. Late 1990s. I think her getting exposed to outside attitudes and influences helped her sow the world in a whole new way. I swear, the term among us was used before the game, lol. I haven't played the game but now I'm picturing the red character I've seen from it at a pulpit yelling about original sin and evil women and I can't help laughing. It was a Baptist church that hasn't been active for years. Again, I don't think everyone in the Baptist faith is like that, but it was the one moment that ruined religion for me. Especially seeing his wife react to the sermon with such support of the message. It was one of those defining moments in my life, a very negative one, and I'm sorry to see so many others who have had this kind of experience themselves. <laughs> Going to a mega church. They received over 1 mil in donations every weekend and spent it on elaborate props and videos rather than helping the community in any meaningful way. <laughs> there was never an answer. I wanted to believe desperately. I wanted to and I begged God to allow me to be doubtless. I tried and tried and tried to make it work. To make it fit. I asked questions. I wondered. I pondered. I just got to a point where there were no more answers. No one had an answer that made sense. Nothing that the next person couldn't alter or contradict. Nothing that was set or fixed. It was all up in the air and I just needed more faith. I tried. I really did. But my mind just won't allow it anymore. Being raised in a Mormon, LDS, church and forced to attend every boring meeting and gathering for 18 years. Even as a young teenager I somehow saw through the coercion tactics. Giving me assignments because. God wanted me to do it when really it was the old white men that saw I didn't want to be there and thought giving me an assignment would help. Or, at testimony meetings every month. You're supposed to speak from your heart about your belief to the congregation. 
Toddlers would be forced to go up and their mothers would whisper in their ear what to say and they would repeat it. I thought this was insane because obviously they're not speaking their own words. I could go on. My mother telling me Santa wasn't real by saying do you really believe that there is a magic man that files to all the houses worldwide in one night on a sleigh. I had always been skeptical anyways but that solidified it. I then wondered at what age she would tell me God isn't real. I went to a Catholic high school in northern Illinois in the late 90s. My family never attended church in all my life. Mom was lapsed Catholic. Dad was Jewish slash Unitarian slash undecided. For whatever reasons, they felt this was a better option than the public high schools. We had to do 20 hours of volunteer slash service work, aka ministry, each semester, 40 hours per school year x 4 years. I did mine at the animal shelter. I became very concerned about animal and human rights, we even founded an animal rights club at the school. I was also in Amnesty International. I cannot describe in mere words how much the experience at the shelter changed my life during those formative years. My final semester of senior year, my monstrous religion teacher decreed that none of the hours I had done since my first day as a freshman counted, because, and these words came directly from his asshole mouth, animals don't have souls. Thank goodness we had some amazing nuns who stood up for me and I was able to graduate. Fuck you Mr. Lepek. Love you Sister Pole. This marks the end of the video. If you like my content, consider subscribing as it helps me a lot. See you until next time.